Merry Christmas, everyone! What do you mean it's not Christmas? When else would I have gotten these ornaments? Also, how do you explain the lights? What do you mean the channel was going to launch videos a month ago, and a Christmas-themed episode would have been very timely had we not postponed the launch? What do you mean it's late January 2022? They said we'd only be in lockdown for a couple of weeks. What do you mean it's only me here? You're right, that does sound like this one. Oh look, we have guests! Hello Internet, and welcome to the Artist Studio, where crafts are handmade, and time just doesn't seem to matter. In today's episode, we're going to turn this clear plastic ornament and some fairy lights into a beautiful Zelda fairy lamp. First up, we need to find a better power source for our fairy. These double A's just aren't going to do the trick. I had this old adapter laying about that might come in use. Then I just blew up a capacitor beside the wires. Stick to the battery packs if you don't know what you're doing, lest you end up like Medi. I'm using a low 3.8 volt, 80 milliamp adapter. Obviously the clear bulb isn't going to give us the translucent glowing body effect that we need. Instead of painting one, leaving us battling brush marks, I decided to use a white balloon. First, cut off the mouth of the balloon, then stretch the balloon over the body of the ornament, making sure not to tear the balloon. Take your LEDs and bundle them together to create a singular light source. Using many individual lights will give the body a more uniform glow expelled in all directions. Now set that aside and admire your magical glowing orb while we begin constructing the wings. A Zelda fairy has four wings, two large primary wings, and two smaller fins. Transfer your paper templates to some cardstock or cardboard and cut out the wings. Using the clear acrylic box your Christmas ornaments came in, cut out some long strips of clear acrylic that will be used to create the structure of the wings. Preserve the larger pieces to fill in the wings that you cut out from the cardstock, and use a liberal amount of super glue along the edges to bond the two. Set that aside to dry and bring in another pair of hands. If you can't find a friend to hold things for you, you can buy your own one of these. They're called helping hands and they're great for holding things beyond that point where you say to yourself, yeah, I bet that's bonded now, only to let go a half second after you do. Take some of those strips of acrylic that you cut earlier and make little plastic hoops. You should make them of varying sizes, but you'll need to make doubles of each size so you can pair each hoop on each wing. You'll need a lot of these, so... A few moments later... Maybe while you're making hoops, you can head over to the Discord channel and join the growing artists community. To get a good bond, we'll need to sand these wings a bit. In retrospect, the hoops would have been a lot easier to make had I sanded where I was gluing. Might be a good tip to put on the Discord. You know, just so I don't forget next time. Use a fine grain and a delicate hand for this. Well bond will help conceal these scuffs later, but deep grooves will be harder to hide. Once you're done sanding, we'll make wing segments. I should have mentioned earlier that we'll need a lot of these strips to make hoops and these segment parts. So best find a good method to cut a lot of these strips. I used a ruler and a knife but a paper cutter would probably work better. To make the segments for the larger wings, I started in the middle of the side connected to the body and used a strip to divide the wings at their tips, making sure to copy everything I do from one wing to the other. To segment the fins, I divided them into four areas that will later infill with the hoops that we made. Before placing all the hoops, I added random strips on the large wings to create zones of varying sizes and shapes. Once each wing is segmented, I began dividing up each segment with an arrangement of hoops. I made sure the hoops I used on each wing were of corresponding size to keep up with the symmetry we've worked up so hard to maintain. By creating all these rounded corners and arches, these wings become extremely strong so long as your glue holds. So don't be shy with the stuff, we'll do our best to conceal any mistakes later. 
it'll take you a lot of glue. Maybe more than you'd expect. Anyway, I needed to buy more, and while I was at the dollar store, I found these smaller LEDs that are going to work way better for our fairy. I also found these colored ones in all their <coughs> Christmas stuff. Might as well add to the festivities. Merry Chinese New Year, everyone? Early, you say? Well, Merry Early Chinese New Year, everyone. With the wings done and dry, it's time to give them some pigment and a bit more rigidity. Luckily, my favorite building material can provide us both. Using Wellbond as a medium, I mixed in a, a bit of blue pigment. The Wellbond will deceive you in thinking that you'll need more paint than you do. Keep the mixture primarily glue. The paint is a tint, and when layered or caked into crevices, it'll dry becoming little pieces of stained glass. Cut out the wings once you're happy with the paint job. I'm going to outline the wing edges in black. They're not quite done, but we're going to get them affixed to the fairy's body. I started with a clean bulb, but you can use the one you have out. Just be sure to remove the lights and balloon before this next part. Mark out the placement with a marker. Then, cut out the slots. I'm using a rotary tool, though a sharp crafting knife will likely do the trick. Once you're sure all four wings fit, remove them and while you're at it, take off any protrusions. Don't worry, just like you, I'm wearing my safety goggles and face mask. We don't want to breathe in any tiny plastic particles. Next, let's get the balloon back on. Now, if you were a smarter crafter than I, You'd learn from my mistakes and maybe add a layer of well bump between the bulb and the balloon. But if you don't, we'll be sure to add a few layers on the outside of the balloon before cutting through those wing slots. A few layers of well bond will hold the balloon's shape when we make those cuts later. Things started to get a bit messy, so I'm using a pair of accuracy claws. Don't be shy, you'll need to use a lot of glue to keep that balloon in shape. If you didn't add any glue between the balloon and the bulb, you may be able to squeeze some glue in there using a paintbrush. This step is very important. By using a pin in the corner of the slots, you'll stop the balloon from tearing further than you'd like. 
poke two holes, and then with a knife, cut the line between them. You can then insert the wings and glue them in place. But not before checking the lighting. Wet well bond will dry clear, so it's going to deceive you here. I'm using a clean well bond here just so I don't mess with any of my tinting. A bit more super glue on these wings won't hurt. Now to stop fussing with it and let it dry for the night. While it's drying, why don't you head over to the Patreon? Your donation will allow me to continue doing projects like this and getting them in front of crafters like you. With everything dried up and the wings firmly in place, it's time to add some contrast to the edges of these wings. I wrap the edges with some white paper glued down with some clean well bond. The black that we added earlier along with the white edge will create a sharp visual attraction for the eye and help delineate a crisp edge. To help create a stronger glowing look, I'm adding some highlights with some white acrylic paint. Keeping the highlights along the inner edges facing the body of the fairy. While I was at the dollar store, I found this extending arm that had this phone clip on the end. I figured it would make a perfect stand for my Navi. Oh yeah, I guess she has her name now. She really does feel alive once she's freestanding like this. Well, if she's finished, it's time to seal her in. Like the Deku scrub mask, I'm using a polyurethane clear semi-gloss. So this time, I'll be giving the fairy many more layers. should have started with gloves. <laughs> well, that's one layer down. I'll do the rest off camera. To give the fairy more presentation, I figure some fairy dust will be the perfect distraction for the eye from the armature. The dollar store also had these weird LED wire strands that I used to coil around the arm. This extra strand will also allow us to conceal the power cable needed for the fairy's LEDs. 
let's take off these battery enclosures first and maybe save them for a future project. Then prep your wire ends for some light soldering. If you are connecting multiple LED strips, make sure that the polarities are the same. You can do that by adding some alligator clips to each end and just powering one of the strips to see if it powers the second one. Once all ends are lined up, use some of your helping hands and get to, get to soldering. Please don't judge my terrible soldering skills. <laughs> I hear you judging. Just leave a comment if you're so inclined on critiquing my efforts here. With all that out of the way, let's glue parts of these down so the coils stay in place before attaching the ferry to the armature. make a cool fairy dust trail, don't you think? To really stick the body to the arm, I used a bit of resin and later some well bond after it had fully cured. And that's it, the fairy lamp is complete. Now to just stick this onto the top of my time accurate Christmas tree. I think that's a pretty tree topper. More than that, Navi can just hang out with me in the studio all year round. She provides a beautiful ambiance for video editing in the dark and almost brings as much life into the room as my houseplants. If you're going to build a fairy of your own, I'd love to see how it goes. Leave a comment below and share some of your experience or head over to the Discord channel and post your finished projects in the gallery to show off. While you're looking around the community, maybe consider becoming a patron to support the artist's studio. Your donation means a lot to me, but I do understand if you can at this time. I'll love you anyway. Next week we'll be wrapping up the Zelda launch extravaganza with a Triforce build that you're not going to want to miss. So until then, get out of here and go get crafty. <laughs>